Welcome to Marriage and Life Stories with Kansime. Uh, today we are sharing a, an exciting topic, and this is money and marriage, money in marriage. Is it true that money is a source of evil, or it is the love of money that becomes a source of evil? As you think about it, everything that you need to, to write, uh, the comments that you need to make concerning this topic, Go to Marriage and Life Stories with Kansime on YouTube channel and drop that comment and drop any other suggestion from that you learn from this topic and we will definitely respond. And please remember to subscribe. This week I want to share with you a joke, a story that, uh, you know, something that happened to me and it made me to laugh. You know, we have grown together with my husband for over 30 years. All these many things, we've gone through it and... It has really been an excellent thing. Last week, I felt like my hair was not good and uh, I needed to go and do a little treatment and it had actually even lost color. I needed to just put in some, a little henna and just to make it smart. And so every woman, when she's uncomfortable about something, she goes to her husband, you know, whether it is about your size, you will go to your husband and say, am I really fat? Um, have I lost weight? Am I beautiful? So we all ask those questions. So I go to my husband, I'm like, honey, uh, is my hair still okay? Because I know he always looks, looks after my hair and he tells me your hair is now bad. Um, we'll do something about it. So I go and say, is my hair bad? He's like, no, I think it is okay. He was on his computer. I think your hair is okay. You're just worried for nothing. Then I move away. I was a bit not, not, not really comfortable with the answer he gave me. And so while I was standing outside with my maid, then she looks at me, she's like, Auntie, your hair is looking so bad. It has turned so brown and, you know, some parts are long. I laughed. I went back to my husband. I said, even you, you have not told me the truth. He said, to be honest, when you asked me, I didn't look. Now, husbands, look at your wives. They count on you for every answer and every suggestion. Good enough, I finally he gave me money, I went and I worked on my hair. I know it is smart, short as it is. Okay, back to our topic today. Is money the, cause, the root cause of evil or the love of money? Many times people complain that when so much money, I have had wives say, we were okay when there was no money. And when money came, things turned around. They became so bad. My husband turned away from me. We started fighting and quarreling in the house. Is it really the money that is the cause of trouble or the love of money? The Bible points it clearly out that it is the love of money that is the root cause of all evil. What happens when there is too much love for the money? When there is too much love for the money, there is um, insatiable desires. Okay, someone loves the money so much that today they want uh, to buy, uh, for the people who have so much, they want to buy a V8. And then they want to buy a Bentley. Then they want to buy, what are those other cars? You know, those expensive Mercedes Benz. They want to buy a Range Rover. And you ask yourself, why are you collecting all these cars? Do you really need them? When they are packed in the compound, the best you can do is to use one car in a day. You have five cars. Now remember that even the more you pack them outside there, the more they are wearing and tearing and the costs become so much. The love of money. The love of money is what drives some women to keep hiding and hiding and putting structures that are not necessary, hidden away from their husbands. They love the money. They pick money from their places of work. They go and build secret houses separate from what their husbands know. Now let me ask you, you love your money too much that you're even constructing houses, apartments and, and rentals that your husband doesn't know. If you died like today, would your children benefit from those hidden uh, uh, investments? The love of money. Men love so many so much 
that they will hide it from their wives and they will keep giving small, small money. And when it has accumulated so much, the love of money will lead you to extramarital affairs. Of course, you're going to spend luxuriously on girls who will praise you and praise you about your worth and praise you about anything. The love of money. Money is excellent. It is a blessing if it is brought in the home and it is used well. Men are known to be the providers of the home. There are cases where women get money and they are actually having more money than men. And in most cases, we have seen those marriages fail. What happens, what is the problem when women get so much money and they are in high positions? What is it that, that happens along the way that causes men to lose and to fail and to be uh, like the woman now is the boss? She will sing about how she's the one who's providing for the home, how she's the one who is paying the fees, if there is rent, how she's the one paying rent. What happens in between? Biblically, the home is blessed through the husband. No wonder the Bible says that if you annoy your wife, then your prayers will not be heard. And so every blessing that comes to that home will come through the husband. If you realize that you are too big now, you're having so much money and you, you are the provider and your winner and you get your husband out of the way, the marriage is not going to be there. The blessings that God purpose for that home are not going to come. So how do you handle your, your money as a woman? If you are blessed and you have so much, honor your husband. Don't shame him. Bring the money to the table. Let the children know that you agree together with the man to provide for all their needs. If you separate yourself from the husband, there is going to be trouble. Your children will miss out on the blessing that come with the man being your cover. Actually, your man is your cover. Whether you have the money or you don't have the money. At one time, I was not working when we were a young couple and uh, I had decided to stay home. We agreed with my husband that I stay home and I take care of the children. And so he was the one only earning. Let me tell you, when a woman doesn't have any money, she becomes a problem because she's going to quarrel. If you give her money, and of course it will never be enough, if you give her money for food and you don't give her money for lotion, problems. If you give her money for food and lotions and she has no money when she's going to visit her parents, problems. And so how does the man manage the problems that come with finances in the event that the wife is not working? This is what my husband did. After I had quarreled, because I would quarrel why the money is not enough to buy me clothes, to give me when I'm going to see my relatives, to buy luxuries in the home. I didn't mind how much he earned or what he saved. Or I wanted my needs to be met. And so this man, wise as he is, he picked his ATM card, uh, got his uh, pay slip and said, this is how much money I add. It goes to this, my account. He even made the account joint. We had a joint account and either of us could sign. So I didn't have to ask him uh, to give me permission to sign for the money out. I didn't have to, he didn't have to ask me. So both of us could sign at any time. Now, in addition to that, he gave me his ATM card. He said, budget for my money. Give me what you feel is enough. And so we sat together. I said, okay, if this is what you need for transport and lunch and all that, I picked it, I gave it to him. And I remained with the ATM card. Man, I spent. I would go to the market and buy everything that even was too much for the house. I would go to the supermarket and spend and buy plates and buy cups and buy so much. So in the first month, I finished the, man, the money halfway the month. By the end of the month, there was no money. And so... In shame, I had to go to my husband and tell him, okay, there's no money for the next week. And so he went and borrowed money. He came and recovered the money. I thought he was going to reprimand me 
and take the card away from me. He didn't. He kept the card with me. And uh, the next month, I was more cautious. I was uh, a better planner, remembering that wife is woman in charge of family economics. So I budgeted a little more better, spent a little more better, and the money was enough. There was no saving. He still left the card with me. And so in the third month, in the fourth month, in the fifth month, and um, in the times that, that followed, I was able to budget enough. I actually even did a little more saving and planted vegetables, the katunguma, the greens, the, the, the mjaja, the, the, the lemongrass. I planted all those in tins at home. And so the money that I used to spend on those vegetables reduced. I have a very small compound, but I planted five stems of bananas. The money that used to go towards buying uh, banana uh, leaves, that one was saved. And eventually I could save here and there, and the money was enough. And we started generating a little more saving as time went on. And so what am I telling the men with that? When you satisfy your woman's uh, desire to spend, you will create a new desire for her to be able to save. She will save so much that she will be more excited about saving even than you, the gentleman. Now, I turned out from me, who was always asking for things, to, to a me who complains to my husband because he's buying for me things that I do not need. That is our position right now. I tell him, you're buying for me this, I don't need it. I, I have enough clothes, please don't spend more. If you're going to the market to buy so much, I do not need, this is what I need. And so I give him the list with the quantities and he has to buy according to that. I, he doesn't have to even be worried that I, I am going to steal money from his pocket. I have heard that women steal money from their husband's purses and uh, every little money that comes, they keep hiding away. What, how did we come to that? My man was wise. And so I ask you, be so wise. Entrust your money with your wife. Build her confidence. And let me tell you, your future is going to be great. Your savings are going to be great. And you're going to have money as a blessing, not as a source of pain or contention. Let's go for this break. Let's come back again and we'll learn at three uh, measures, three measures that you can put in the place to increase your money and to make money a total blessing to build a long-lasting marriage. See you after the break. Welcome back from the break where we have been discussing about money in marriage. Is it the love of money or the money that is the problem, that is the curse? Um, we are looking at, uh, I had promised that I'm going to share with you three principles that are going to help you to have money as a blessing, that are going to help you to build a very loving relationship, that are going to help you to generate more money. I'm not saying you can be a billionaire, but according to what you're doing, you will be able to generate more money and save. Now, the principle number one, principle number one of holding money and that money becoming a blessing is appreciating that it is God who gives you the power to make wealth, okay? Now, when you realize that it is God who gives you the power to make wealth, then you will know that God has interest in the money that you make. And so, what are God's interest in that money that you make? If you don't have God's interest, it ceases to be from God, it becomes the love of money. When you have God's interest, you are going to be open about that money and know that it is one, 
to meet your needs, okay? You meet your needs, uh, take care of your children, uh, take care of those people around you, and, uh, uh, and then after taking care of those, then remember that God wants us to take care of the widows, the orphans, and the poor. Actually, when you take care of the poor, the Bible says, you lend to God. When you take care of the widows and the orphans, it is touching to God. It means that as you make more money, God will have interest. Now, uh, some women, when it comes to helping the needy, women do not want that to happen. Now, I'll advise you. If you stop your man from helping his relatives, okay, you are not only being selfish, but you are being selfish to your children. How do you feel if your, your, your husband's brothers, who are your children's uncles, are poor? You know, as we were growing up, my mother told me one thing. She said, if your husband is educating the children, uh, his brothers and sisters, support him because those are your children's uncles. At some point, your children will be proud of their uncles, their aunties. And so to me, it was okay. Go ahead, and, and, and he paid the school fees for his brothers and his sisters. And uh, right now, my children are proud of their uncles and their aunties because none of them is coming back to the house. So recognize the giver of the money and then help the people within your circles. The Bible actually says if you have that money and you're not helping your immediate family, you are worse than a non-believer. So principle number one, recognize that God gives you the power to make wealth. The day you make wealth outside of God, it is going to turn out to you as a curse. Now principle number two, make sure your spouse knows everything about that money okay you are a wife make sure your husband knows everything about your money how you make it how you spend it let him know husband let your wife know how much you earn and how much you spend a period comes in that marriage that you you don't even have to follow up each other you can have a joint account you can have separate account but let there be freedom of that money now, I, I know there are some gentlemen and some ladies who have left this earth, okay? They have died. But their children are suffering, yet they have so much money in the bank accounts. The wife doesn't know or the husband doesn't know about this money that was hidden, that was stashed off in the accounts. So what do you benefit? Hiding money is, as, you know, is an indication that it ceases to be a blessing, it becomes the love of money, which is the root cause of all evil. All these banks we see in, in, in our countries, they hold money of people who have died and they have not shared the presence of this money with their spouses. Now, let me tell you, God forbid, but if I died, there's nothing that my husband doesn't know about me. You know, he knows where my money is. He knows how much I earn. He knows where I have saved. He has uh, my PIN number to my, to my, to my uh, bank account. He has uh, passwords to everything that I have. And so there is nothing. If I need to build a house, uh, an investment, we build together. Because this is something we have done together right from the beginning. We agreed to build each other. We chose to trust each other. As much as we could, we made it uh, like a subject that we had to, to, to start and to go forward. And so we know everything about each other. He's not worried whether I got his account. He will only ask me, uh, is it you who, who moved money from the bank? Yes. And he's not going to ask me what I need that money for. If he went to my account, I will only say an alert. And I will ask, is it you who did that? And he will say yes. And that's it. Everything we own we know we own it together. This house, we own it together. The village, we own it together. Any small thing, it is for both of us. So if he left the earth, I don't have to go and ask anybody. If I left the earth, he doesn't have to ask anybody. And so trust each other with your finances. You have no better partner 
than that very wife and that very husband. Now, principle number three of making money a blessing. Teach your children on how you make money uh, and how you spend it and how you are going to save and involve them in your investments. I know families where they keep making money and they keep the children under a luxurious lifestyle and so children know that money in their home never runs out. These children don't even know the investments their parents make. They are never involved in the supervision if the children, if the parents are, uh, are building. These children are never taken to the site and be involved. Now, I appreciate my brother Apollo. He will carry his children to the building site. He's an engineer. He will get them to work on the site, pick bricks, and you know, they are working and they are paid for the day. Now, let me tell you that children are so, so humble and so hardworking and uh, congratulations, Dawood, he even got a four in, in, in this uh, primary seven. But they work. They know where money has come from. They know where uh, the, the, their parents get money from, and they see those uh, construction sites. I am sure when their parents are old and unable and, and to help themselves, these children will be able to stand up and manage these properties. The money will cease to be useful the moment you die and your children don't even know how to manage what you have made and the best they will do is to sell your properties and so in that way your money is going to become a source of pain they will sell they will not know how to manage the other people will steal from them and so your money will end let me ask you parents if you follow these three principles we just listed acknowledge god as the giver Entrust your spouse with all your savings, whether it is the man or the wife. Let you know and you plan. Both of you should know each other's uh, income and plan accordingly. Get your children to work and to be involved in managing your properties. That is how money is going to be a blessing and that is how money is going to last for long in your home. Is that too much to ask? Why do you think about making this money? and then let the world enjoy it. Why do you think about uh, making this money and at the end of the day, your wife or your husband or your children are in the courts of law fighting over money which should have been a blessing. We can all make it a point and we make money a blessing and stop the other part which is the love of money that makes it a curse. And so the moment you see people fighting over property, then you know you had too much love for the money and it has turned out to be a curse. Now, before I sign out, I am going to take you to my kitchen and we're going to make a, a health snack. This is a natural remedy section. We are going to go and make home remedies. These are things that we make in the home that are healthy for our bodies, that help us to build uh, our immune system and give us longevity, longevity. It is not necessary for me to teach you about money, to teach you about this, when actually you're going to die young when actually you don't even know how to eat or what to feed your children on. Join me now as we make our home remedies and then we'll come back and we'll make our concluding remarks. Welcome with me to Home Remedies. Uh, welcome to our natural remedies, our home remedies. Today we are making a, a very healthy uh, French, French toast and uh, we are making uh, some eggs first. Uh, we are putting in tomatoes and onions and remember that our children in most cases do not even like to eat these things so what we do we we make a camouflage of these foods in the safest way that the children will be able to enjoy the benefits of tomatoes of onions and eggs and make the bread uh, a safer carbohydrate now uh, the reason i'm using this uh, method of, of, of adding in the tomatoes. I'm, I'm, I'm scrubbing, scrubbing the tomatoes against this plate. Is I want it to be as smooth as possible so that it doesn't show up in the eggs. Because there are so many people who don't like the sight of uh, the tomato cover in their sauce and I'm one of them. So I remove safely the beneficial part 
Okay. Here, this is our product right now. These are eggs and finely chopped tomatoes. Okay. Done. Get this to wipe my hands. Okay, we are going to make a serving for one. Uh, we will use two eggs. Sorry. The egg you have to heat it once so that they are, there is no room for the small particles on the eggshell to fall in. Because some people do not like that. Although eggshells are, are here, they are rich in calcium. Some people process them for food. But some people cannot stand the, 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 the sight, the taste of eggshells in their, in their egg. Okay, so those are two eggs. I'm going to use pink salt. I'm going to use pink salt. Pink salt has so many health benefits uh, for people who are diabetic. This is it, Himalayan pink salt. You can even eat the pink salt if you want to, to gain so many health benefits from it. Okay. I like putting it on my hand and just putting it in my mouth because I know the health benefits. Okay. Now we will stir our egg, mix it properly. Now there are people also who don't like uh, eating eggs, just plain eggs. The, the, the texture of it doesn't um, go well with them. So for your breakfast or for your evening meal, because this is a complete meal, the onions have all the phosphorus, uh, the tomato have all the enzymes that you need for your heart. So if you do not want to cook food, um, these are some of the things that you can make to make a healthy, uh, a healthy snack. And so this is my bread. I have this bread specially made for, there is a, a gentleman who makes this bread from the neighborhood. And he makes amazing bread, very specially made for, for his clients. It's a small bakery. So he makes this bread specifically for his clients and uh, we love buying it. So you soak this bread in the eggs, eggs with tomatoes, with onions, and you make sure that it is uh, well soaked. And so put, um, let me light up the gas. allow it to smoke. You know that point where you heat it too much? It steams, because right now I can see it steaming. When you heat it too much and it, it, it gets to, uh, we call it a smoking point, which is the boiling point, where you put in onions and you make it turn brown, that is dangerous. Now, cooking oil, you are supposed to use it at this level, okay? It is making that charring point, but the things are not turning brown immediately. So that is how safe you can make cooking oil. Uh, apparently, I, I love my things fried. And so I have found, I've tried to discover the best way of how I can use cooking oil and I still have uh, a good health. Some people say that they cook with olive oil, but I must disappoint you. Olive oil is not meant for cooking, it is meant to be eaten fresh. And so, if you have been cooking with olive oil, it's not helping you. Use coconut oil if you want to cook, because coconut oil can stand, um, it can stand too much heat without becoming 
uh, poisonous for no, for, no, for no health. And then another danger with cooking oil is when you reuse oil. Reusing oil is one of the most dangerous things that you can have. This is our French toast. It's going to make the bread very safe to eat because you have combined the, the wheat with the protein. You have added in the phosphorus, the sulfur, the magnesium that comes from the onions. You have added in the hot, healthy tomato. And so when you eat this meal, maybe the other thing you can do is add on slices of cucumber, slices of carrot, and you have a complete meal. Thank you so much for choosing to eat the healthy way with home remedies. See you another time. Welcome back from our home remedies segment. I hope you enjoyed making this uh, French toast, which is egg in bread, and uh, a very healthy recipe that helps us to absorb as much protein as possible, as well as neutralizing the bad effects of the carbohydrates. Now, I know some of you like bread so much and you cannot do away with bread, but this is the best way that we can eat our bread. And uh, as I close and I sign out, I want to remind you about uh, money in marriage and the, is it the love of money or the money itself that is a challenge? I will still put it to you that you can make money a blessing, a total blessing, uh, if you recall the three principles we mentioned, acknowledge God as the giver, uh, make sure you are working together on that finance with your spouse, and get your children to be involved in the, the finances that you're making. And when you follow those three principles, money will be a blessing. It will not be a curse in your home. See you next Sunday. God bless you. Bye-bye.